Ramsey personality, Dr. D, Dr. John Deloney, PhD in counseling, for those of you that have not yet been introduced to him. We're talking a lot today about anxiety, about fear, and taking your financial questions, your questions about how to deal with some of those things, where maybe where people are mean to you, they're inappropriate to you, how do you react, how do you set boundaries in those situations, and uh, Dr. D will be with us answering your questions. So... What are some of the things that people can do? Because, like, our team went home last week, mm-hmm. so there's nobody in our building right now except a handful of us, skeleton crew, to get this uh, radio show do- going. Uh, in case people didn't know, we got about a thousand people in the building doing all kinds of other things that have nothing to do with radio, and they're all working from home uh, this week and next week. Um, and um, what kind of things people can do in those situations to, because that break in routine can add to fear, can't oh, it? it? can wipe you out, right? It's There's this part of our brain that is so, um, I guess, tricked to believe that um, familiarity is safety, right? And so yeah. anytime you get plugged into something and it's new, every alarm system goes off, right? So it's just about setting a new routine, setting new, uh, mapping out your day. If, if you're if you're married, if you got kids, if you're by yourself, set a plan, set a plan for the day. So like if you have a, a like a, almost a daily agenda and you follow that, even though it's new, because it was a plan, it lowers stress. That's right. And it, it'll take a couple of days. Expect your kids to push on you and find out how strong those boundaries are. Um, expect your coworkers and your, your significant others to lean on you a little bit, see how firm your that boundary is going to be. But absolutely, set up a plan and over a couple of days, whew, yeah, it'll just become your new normal, right? Yeah. Homeschooling is now a way of life oh, for, man. for a lot of people. And it is. I love the post I saw this week. The lady said, uh, homeschooling's, uh, we just started it. It's going well so far. Two of the students have been expelled for fighting and the teacher got fired <laughs> for drinking. Yeah, the teacher got fired for drinking. So it's just, it's bad. But yeah, I mean, it, it's... A lot of people are experiencing some new stuff during That's this right. two weeks. Um, they're also experiencing lo- job loss. That's right. Uh, if you're in the hospitality world anywhere, you're probably at home. That's right. Uh, airline, uh, uh, restaurants, for sure. Um, lots of hotels. Uh, you're at home, and you don't even know if you're going back in a lot of cases. That's and, scary. And that can be really, really scary. How do you manage through the stress of... I can, I can talk about how to handle the money through the unemployment side, but how do you manage through the stress of that? I think there's a couple of things you can do. I think the first thing is to not curl up in a ball, right? Because that's, that's some of our default position. And, and like you said earlier, um, either curl up in a ball or don't start being angry at people. Um, I think the most important thing, number one, is to get connected to folks and make sure that when you're staying at home that you're still FaceTiming with people you haven't talked to, still calling people you haven't talked to. Um, showing gratitude to folks, whether it's to yourself or whether it's to um, your neighbors are important, um, to healthcare workers, delivery drivers. And then honoring your body, making sure you are sleeping and exercising and not just in the media sphere right not just scrolling all day every day if you're scrolling through a bag of chocolate chip cookies and through every possible (laughs) negative media account by the end of the day you are going to be miserable you are just spinning that anxiety spin cycle faster and faster and faster that's right crazy cycles going on high speed that's right that's right yeah and you're gonna make yourself nuts that's right get outside and just go walk yeah that's right get outside and go walk yeah and uh and there are places that are hiring um, and it may not be the great jobs. It may not be perfect jobs. It may be tied over jobs. Right? And sometimes just doing something, do something, that's is right. better than nothing. Almost uh, always, it, it it does relieve. There, there's some sense of I have control of my destiny. That's right. Even though you, we never have a hundred percent control of our destiny. We do control the controllables, and that's you right. need to control those things. And so, uh, I saw George Campbell, one of our guys, post that these people are hiring right now. Aldi. Amazon posted, I saw a letter from uh, their CEO, they're hiring 100,000 people. Wow. Amazon's going bananas. Uh, Costco, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Domino's, Instacart, Jets Pizza, Kroger, Microsoft, Pepsi, um, Postmates, Publix, Slack, Target, Trader Joe's, UPS, Uber Eats, Walmart, Whole Foods, Zoom, they're all hiring. That's right. And so if you were waiting tables two weeks ago, you may be working there. And who knows? You might even accidentally find a new career. That's right. I guess that's a Ken Coleman show. That's right. And something as similar as, as, as I mean, as simple as my son and I were, were going for a walk the other day, and we just got a trash sack and some little rubber gloves we had from hunting season, and we just picked up trash in the neighborhood. I can't tell you, Dave, how many people stopped us and just said thank you. Hey, can we join you? Hey, we're going to go home and grab. It was just a matter of doing something. We got to walk. We got some sunshine. And we got some together time, me and him. We, we stayed appropriately distant from everybody. But then we also got to help the neighborhood, too. Something small and something little. But I got to feel like I wasn't just trapped in my house, yeah. unable to do anything, right? Well, it's it's hard to have a pity party if you're helping someone else. Every time. 
every time. It's hard to, it's hard because a pity party is fairly low attended. <laughs> so you see a party of one. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I mean, if, if you find an elderly person and you can uh, that's locked in and you can find out they need. They're shut in. I mean, they they're, they're, they need to stay in because they're high Absolutely. risk. You, you may make a grocery store run for them. My buddy Kevin texted this morning, and he said, um, this is a great opportunity for millennials. They've got a bad rap. Instead of making TikTok workout videos, they could call the local Meals on Wheels and see um, how they can get involved there or find other charitable organizations that are usually, usually rounded out by um, older folks in our communities who are now having to stay inside. Man, what a cool moment to rise to the occasion and go help your communities. Stop you know, making Instagram photos, man. Let's get out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the you know, there, there's uh, careful because you have Instagram and so do I. But that's uh, you're right. Exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, it's not it's not time for selfies. That there you go. Uh, the, this is time for otheries or whatever you call that. Right. We'll start a whole new phrase here. But uh, there is something that does happen in the brain chemistry when you're giving rather than brooding. That's right. That, that helps you get through the anxiety. And we get to choose which thoughts we ruminate on, right? Or which ones that we're going to worship. And so when that negative thought, that fear thought comes in, you have a choice. And that is, you're right. I'm going to Google it. I'm going to go down the rabbit hole of anxiety. I'm going to go in the, the rabbit hole of pessimism. Or we can say, not today. I'm going for a walk. Or yeah. I'm going to grab my kid and we're going to head outside. Yeah. Or I'm going to go, I'm going to tell my wife, great job. Well, what happens is inevitably there's a real problem. That's I mean, right. you got to pay the light bill. That's exactly and right. And you got no money. That's you right. You got to put food on the table, and you got no job. That's right. There's a real problem, but what inevitably I do, and I think it's human nature, is is that we project that problem to its possible worst scenario a month and a half from now. That's right. And you can project in your mind the nation's economy or the nation's uh, carnivor- coronavirus curve. Right. The curve. God, help me with the curve. Right. But, um, you know. But you can project the worry, um, and, and it just becomes debilitating stress when you project it out into the future. That's right. And there's plenty of people who are trying to sell that to us as well, right? It's like a full-time job. That's right. Well, and, and you know, in some cases, they're just afraid. That's right. They're, they're friends and family, and they're, they're saying, if you, don't, if you don't do this, all of society is going to die. We're kind of irresponsible. This is where people are getting mean right? because they're afraid. Right. And um, it, it's scary from a macro perspective what a politician, a person in government, even the news media can pull off if you can get enough people afraid at the same time. Isn't it wild? This is how uh, dictators come to power, is in situations where people become sheep <laughs> because of fear. Because of fear, that's right. They huddle in the corner and do everything they're told. And... Um, so I, I'm afraid I'm a little bit more of a rebel than that. Uh, so I'm a little bit harder to, to mandate my thinking. But you have to back up and put critical thinking skills and go, okay, is the cure the problem? Has it reached the point that the cure is worse than the virus? Has it reached the point that the permanent damage to families' futures has superseded their health? And for me, I tend to go macro, like you say. I tend to get two years, five years down the road and think of all these what ifs. And what I have to always do is draw myself back and say, I actually don't know the answer to that question. And I can't control it. That's right. And all I can, I can control it. is what I can control. Which is me right now. And that's I have right. to be concerned about the families that work on my team. That's right. And are they going to be able to pay their bills because I acted responsibly and kept this place running? Right. Or versus, am I putting their health at risk? That's exactly right. And that's a leader's position. That's right. That I have to make those decisions. Um, and, you know, in a family, you have to do the same thing. And as an individual, you have to do the same thing. But no one makes good decisions when they're panicked or drunk. Art Laffer says, my favorite quote of the year, and I'm going to use it a lot. He sent me an email last night, as a matter of fact, quoting it again. So, Dr. John Deloney with us this hour, half hour, next hour, as we talk about money. And uh, we talk about what's going on out there and your feelings about it. i got a coach, got a counselor right here beside me. 